Hello and welcome to the CS school and it's the time for pediatrics and let's get started. Pediatrics is the fourth level in the uh, CS tower after chest, uh, abdomen and gynae. We assume that you watched the central concept so there is no need uh, uh, to speak again about the foundation and the design of the CS tower. Uh, here the, uh, there are the expected cases that you may see in the pediatrics and the CS examination. A fever, the commonest one, bed wetting, uh, yellowish discoloration, weight loss, uh, diarrhea. And, uh, and as per our strategy, we usually bring the similarities between those cases and we put them into a single entrance. The single entrance usually serves all the cases. I'm going to ask you a question before starting. Uh, are pediatric cases a bit different from other types of cases? What do you think? Yeah. Try to think, please. Yes, there is no child SBs, you know, and uh, instead there is a legal guardian or a caretaker, usually one of the parents. And subsequently, there is no physical examination because there is no real patient. Okay, and accordingly, there is different time management. To understand more, please have a look on the roadmap. This is the patient encounter. Uh, and uh, we discussed it before in the center concepts. Just I wanted to pay your attention for this area in the pediatrics. This area is left blank. There is no physical examination in the CS examination for pediatrics. And uh, okay, let me let me think with you. Is it a good way to leave the patient encounter after nine minutes? If there is no physical exam and the, the medical history typically takes from six to seven minutes and communication interpersonal skills like a couple of minutes. So if there is no physical examination, probably you will leave the, the encounter after like uh, after nine or 10 minutes. Okay, we don't recommend to leave the patient encounter so early. Uh, instead, we have another proposal just to uh, compensate, okay, to overcome this gap from the history and from the closure. So uh, we suggest, you know, giving two minutes, more two minutes uh, to the history and one minute from the closure to, to cover this area. And also in the pediatrics, there are some issues that should be addressed. So you should ask about pregnancy, delivery, neonatal history, developmental history, immunization, and check of visit. So as you see, our strategy to cover the physical examination from the history and the, from the closure and the counseling by specific issues to the pediatric uh, cases. The same strategy for the patient. There is no physical examination. So instead, we are going to type the pediatric history. Okay. Uh, at the other issues uh, for in the patient encounter and in patient note in the roadmap, I think it is well understood from the central concepts. So let's start with uh, the uh, pediatric history. And this is in red. Those questions. Uh, should be asked in all the pediatric cases in the CS examination. And the, here is a good mnemonic for these questions. A pregnant woman delivered a neonate who developed DIC. Pregnancy, delivery, neonatal history, developmental history, immunization, as well as checkup visits. Okay, you will see a couple of questions which are the basics. And if you have time, and I think you will have time in the pediatric uh, pediatric cases. So do not worry about the, the time in patient note or the patient encounter. So questions for pregnancy. Was Tom's pregnancy full term or preterm? Did you have any problems with Tom's pregnancy? Did you do the routine check of visits while you were pregnant? When you were pregnant, did you smoke? Did you drink alcohol? Did you use any street drugs? Did you have an ultrasound done? Did you have the routine immunization shots such as influenza? Did you have a natural birth or a C-section? Were there any complications? Did your child come out healthy? Was Tom a healthy kid at birth? Did he feed well after delivery? When did he have the first bowel movement? 
Did your child have any yellowish or bluish skin discoloration at birth? And the following are the questions for the developmental history and you should ask according to the age. For example, if the, in the doorway information the child is one year, ask those questions only. And if he's for example three years, ask those questions only. Okay? At six months, can your child remain seated with support? Does your child both things in his mouth when he picks them up? Does your child show an anxiety when meeting new people? Can your child remain seated by herself without support? Can he crawl? Can he say mom and dad? Can your child stand up with support? Can your child say a sentence of two words? Can he climb the stairs by himself? Can your child walk? Can your child say a sentence of three words? Can he ride a tricycle? Can he wash his hands? At four years, can he jump? Can he use scissors? Does he play with the other kids? And for immunization, you, there is a formal and informal way. The formal way, you can ask about immunization. What immunization has he had? You can ask directly in informal way about shots. Okay? So, checkup visits. Has your child had checkup visits done? When was the last time? What were the results of the last checkup? Okay, those are wonderful questions and the, this is a wonderful uh, mnemonic that can be used in all the cases. I'm going to stop a little here in the, for the uh, closure. Uh, this is the routine, the routine closure that we uh, learned before. Mr. or Mrs., let me make sure I understood you correctly. As you told me, your child has such and such, it doesn't have such and such. Based on the medical history, it could be or it could be such and such, okay? But I wanted to add this in all the pediatric cases. However, I can't rely on the medical history alone. I recommend seeing your child for a physical exam. You should say it because you haven't seen the child yet. I recommend seeing your child for a physical exam. I wanted to take his pulse, check his temperature, check the other vital signs. Probably we need to take a blood sample take some pictures of the chest, when they have the results, I will be in a better position to give you the final diagnosis. It should be said in all the cases, okay? And uh, you should finally uh, determine the uh, a date. You should, because it, I just said now, I, I recommend seeing your, your child. When? Really, the severity of the case determines when and how to see the kid. Okay, so for urgent cases, for example, like uh, foreign body aspiration, bronchial asthma, what do you think? You should ask to see the patient immediately. Say, your child's condition is serious. Please bring him immediately to the hospital. However, in routine cases like nocturnal enuresis or loss of wear, it's okay to say, what about an appointment, scheduling an appointment next week? Because it's not an emergency. In other cases like uh, high fever, uh, severe diarrhea, you know, it's not urgent, okay? It's not necessary to bring the kid uh, immediately and also doesn't make sense, you know, to delay, to say I'm going to see him next week. So you can say to the mother or father, when can you bring him to the hospital, okay? So I'm going to stop also here for a common questions and scenarios at the, uh, at the end or at the closure. So the mother or the father can say to you, I can't come to the hospital. I don't have a car. I don't have a transportation. How do you reply? So also, if I return back, the severity determines the reply. Okay. If it is an urgent case, okay, or emergent case, you can say, I understand, but your child's condition is serious. Hang up and call 911 now. They are going to arrange for you a ride. Okay, so once you arrive, just ask someone at reception to page me. My name is Dr. Such and Such. And once I know that you arrived, I will drop what I am doing and I will come to you as soon as possible. Sounds good?
However, if the mother asked you this question, okay, I can't come to the hospital, I don't have a transportation, and the case with high fever, respiratory tract infection, or diarrhea, so how do you reply? Okay, so you can say, uh, could you call a taxi or get a ride from someone? Your child is not in a serious condition, but he needs, you know, to see a doctor, and the sooner the better, okay? And the, the, the other common uh, scenario or situation here, the mother can tell you, I have other kids, I have little kids, and I can't, I can't leave them alone, okay? So how do you respond? Okay, you can say uh, simply, I understand that you are in difficult situation, and although you are concerned about your kids, but Tom's uh, health is my priority right now. Please, hold on, I'm going to contact one of our social workers. They are going to arrange for the child care for you. Okay, uh, those are common scenarios in the, uh, in the pediatric cases at the closure. Okay, for telephone encounters, which is common in, uh, in pediatrics cases, so we recommend do not answer the guardian's questions until you finish taking the history. Put in your mind that you haven't seen the kid yet. Do not be afraid to ask for clarification. Ask the caller to speak up, speak down. Say, simply say, could you slow down your speech, please? Okay, okay. And uh, repeat the uh, the question or paraphrase it. Ask to repeat. Ask the the uh, the parent, please. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Can you paraphrase it? Uh, and you can rephrase it by yourself to be sure that you heard the uh, the, the question correctly. Okay. And there is no physical examination in pediatric cases.